folks so I'm going to talk a little bit uh, about the, the running W on our oh pretty good uh, horse trainer he's author and he's also a veterinarian you better believe it. he was a veterinarian and his name was Charles O. Williamson out of Hamilton Montana okay now this dude or this guy I should say dude because that's a derogatory term in uh, the cowboy world that's something they say out in California. Hey, dude. Uh, but anyhow, <laughs> this feller was uh, the cat's meow in the 50s, 60s, and 70s for uh, starting horses and uh, doing stock horses. He was actually one of the first clinicians out there across the United States. This is how much of an impact he was in the horse community. And you might be asking, well, Travis, why are you bringing this, this Jasper up? Well, it's pretty easy. He covers the running W, okay? And if I have a veterinarian from the past highly recommended a running W, I gotta take heed to that, okay? And uh, so this is what he says. I have his book right here, okay? You can read the title there. I'll also have it posted here. And it says here, uh, you might have a lot of encounters on odd horses, all right? <laughs> One's that your mate's snorty and ready to fight. He acts if he could not stand the cinch. He tries to buck each day when first lunge with the saddle and then tries it with rider. He refused to be desensitized and believes that canvas, slickers, papers will injure him and continue to act accordingly. Many grab themselves often when mounted, which means basically humping their back, let out a loud grunt or bellow, and suddenly start to bucking. These actions seem involuntary. For the breaker of these horses, the sensible method is the running W, as has been explained under the equipment section. And I'll go across this equipment here a little bit later through this video. Okay, so what it talks about here, what he's talking about is take the lunge line in the left hand and the rope of the W in the right hand and get in the center of the corral. Start him going to the left around you, and when he starts running or buck, gradually take his front feet with a W, causing him to stumble and finally to rest on his knees. Hold it in that position for a minute, talking or whistling all the while. Let him up and start over. Each time he tries to buck run, put him on his knees, taking care not to throw him suddenly on his nose. In a short time, you may easily keep him in line merely by pulling on the rope enough to hinder the movement of the front legs. Some necessary to put him on the knees more than twice. Much good judgment, this is key, much good judgment and horse sense should be used with the running W in order not to injure a horse by throwing him on his nose or to break his spirit and make him afraid to move. Okay, so you can see that's the key point there is that we're not trying to break the horse. We're not trying to break its neck. We're not trying not to break its limb. Try not to break... Uh, the horse's spirit, all the thing we're trying to do is stop the bucking, okay? And that's what the running W is for. And then he gets to the point where you just slowly grab it, he'll feel it, and he, and he thinks about bucking, he won't do it no more, okay? And then he goes uh, further on talking about the habit of bucking and breaking that habit. We're just talking about breaking the habit, not the horse. The running W first teach him to use it accordingly to the structure previously given so you will not throw him when mounted. And then proceed to ride him with it. Every time he starts one of his bad habits, slightly use the W so he's in for with the action of his feet. He will remember his lesson in the corral when straightened out, do whatever you require for fear of being thrown his knees. This, this method takes longer, but it's safer and more scientific. It's often necessary to ride some horse that acquire a habit of bucking for a period of several weeks with a running W. The running W is not an innovation of the originated by the author of this course. It's been used for breaking harness horses for many decades, okay? So basically what they did is transferred from, you know, uh, wagon harness, uh, harness horses uh, to saddle horses to prevent uh, bucking, okay? Basically, that's what uh, this video is about is the running W, and we're going to go over the equipment. We're going to talk about a little bit more. Uh, items are running W here next. I just wanted to talk about veterinarian wrote a book and talked about it specifically 
and bought the running W, okay? All right, so we're going to go next uh, to the next part of the video. Follow me right now. Well, howdy, folks. This is Travis of Elston Equine Solutions and the Clopton Cow Company down here at the sunny uh, portion of Arizona. And today's topic and presentation is the running W. Not the flying W. We'll cover that later on, but this one's called the running W. What is the running W used for? Well, running W is used for horses that like to buck, like this one behind me. And I'm talking about the ones that you're not starting, ones that have uh, gone away with bucking a lot, and you've tried every other method of, uh, you know, put sideline hobbles on, get on top, uh, doing nice, slow with time uh, work, uh, you know, stuff like that, which turns into the horse keeps bucking still. This is one of your last options, and basically, it is used for ones that really learn to buck and are not controlling it and they have fun doing it and they've gotten away with it for so long, which turns into, you guess it, a problem horse. And that's what we got behind me. Uh, I got this horse and it's dropped off here as a problem horse and I've tried all the other methods. And I'm up to this technique here. I got a few others. And there's a lot of controversy on the use of the running W. And I figured today I might as well present it to you just as a way of getting the job done. Do I recommend it for every horse? Heck no. Absolutely not. Okay. The key word was problem horses. Always escalate up to the level, the next level, offering the horse the best deal. Okay. Uh, some of the equipment to be able to do on this that you're going to need is obviously I like to use a round pen with a lot of sand like I'm in right now. Uh, some of the things you're going to need is you're going to need a halter and extra long uh, lead rope is what you're going to need. You're also going to need a saddle. And I like to use another long 20 footer, 30 foot a piece of cotton rope. Same length as that piece right there. In addition to that, I have a leg collar right here with a ring. And on the other side, I'll have another leg collar. This portion here is obviously for use for the cinch strap. All it is is a dog collar basically and just a ring flowing in between. And that's basically set up. And one up more addition thing I like to use, if I've taught a horse how to pick up its feet, which is mostly prom horses, I can get away with putting the leg wraps around the hind legs of the feet uh, to help mitigate the burns of a horse. Because remember, I'm not trying to destroy a horse, I'm not trying to uh, take anything away from the horse except for the bucking. That's the only thing I'm trying to fix with this technique. I'm trying not to do anything else, all right? And obviously this piece of equipment is a W. It's shaped like that with the handler hanging on to the lead rope and, and also the running W and you're controlling the situation. As it goes in a circle, starts bucking, you're gonna pull the W out and drop his knees in the ground. And I'm not trying to lay a horse down, I'm just trying to bring it down to his knees. And then I might whistle, encourage him, talk to him, and then he gets back up on himself. I have nothing, no aggression against the horse. I don't get mad at the horse. This is something the horse needs to learn through himself, okay? A negative reaction is brought on by another negative reaction. And this has been around for a long time. And uh, there's actually books upon it. And I'll read some of the information out there to you, okay? Should everybody use this? Absolutely not. Leave it for the professionals to be able to do this technique or be taught in hand by a cowboy, okay? That's been using this stuff, this equipment a long time. Just don't go out there and just apply it and use it. This is for education. This is for historical purposes of showing you how to apply it and also how to use it on this channel. That being said, we're gonna place the equipment on right now.
Okay, so the first thing I'm going to put on is this uh, leg collar. It's going to be on the offside. I always set up my offside first, and that's what I'm going to do with this one. After I've started the outside one, I like to go ahead and put the, the belly strap on the girth. So I'm simply going to place it in. The girth's going to go through here and I have a ring. Okay, once I got the belly strap on, what I'll do is take the bitter end of the rope and feed it through the chest ring, located underneath the center portion of the cinch. After that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and take the near side leg collar and place it on right around the pasture bone. Then I'll take the bitter end and run it through the ring of the leg collar that's on this side. And I'm gonna go from inside to outside with it. So the medial side to the lateral side. Okay, you're gonna say, well, where's the W? Well, I'm not finished. I gotta take the stirrup, take it down, and what I'm gonna do is feed the bitter end through the stirrup. I like to go from the head to the tail with the feeding of the rope. Okay, now what I have is a running W, you see? And I'll get a close up, and I'll get a close up of the material right now. All right, folks, so what we have is the running W. As you can see, if you turn it upside down, it looks like a W. You have a leg hobble collar with the rope, ran up to a ring and a dog collar, right dead center of where the rings are on your cinch. I wouldn't recommend tying rings to this, rings on the cinch, because they'll break off. Believe me, I've done that in the past, okay? Then it traces back down to this leg collar, back up to the stirrup. And you can see, if you can get away with it, you need to put uh, leg protection on the back so a horse doesn't get caught up and burn themselves on rope by stepping in the front rope. Right here, they'll burn it up, a possibility. So what they'll do is they'll take that rope and step in the front, you know, once the knees come down. Because the knees come down, the, the knees come down, these ropes are back here, this foot could possibly come into it and they get a rope burn. So you have to mitigate risk and make sure that you have everything in the correct position. Savvy? All right, folks. So what I'm going to do is untie the horse from uh, where he's tied up. This will be a live demonstration of the run W. Sorry for the noise here on the backhoe. Okay, so we got the horse going. My left hand has the lunge line. Right hand is running W. Starting to pick up speed. Left hand's taller than my right hand. 
and he's starting to buck here. And slowly bring him down and let him on his knees. Okay, so I had to let go of the lunge line and grab with both hands the running W to set him down on his knees. You can see I wasn't very fast on it, just real subtle, decreasing the speed until he landed on his knees. That noise of him hitting the round corral was the stirrup uh, getting caught on the round corral, the outside one. He didn't get hurt or anything. I was whistling at him there the whole time he was down. Then forced him to get up. Get up. And he got up on his own. Now I'm just rubbing his forehead. I don't worry about it much. I want the horse to know that he's learning from his own actions. So we're going to set him out again. And you'll see nothing's wrong with him. Okay, so we're going to get lined out here. You'll see my left hand has lunge line, right hand has run W line. I will keep my left arm up and my right hand down so that way both the lines or ropes don't get tangled up. You see the horse is not limping, he's not hurting. He's actually relaxed. Once again, I apologize for the backhoe noise. Uh, we are making a uh, flat area for a solid wall round pin. You'll see here in soon that the horse will speed up. And I'll have to uh, trot to keep up with him. And what I'll do is slowly pull on the running W line and slow him down. You'll see here. So I'm speeding up with my feet. I'm going to slow him down. Running W. There you go. See? I'm not trotting with him. And I'll talk to him positively the whole time. Here pretty soon you hear him uh, breathing now. Sigh of relaxation. And that's the sound of a win-win for both of us. relaxed again so I'll go ahead while I'm cooling them down just have them relax I'm not asking for much and then I'll actually have them turn and face me and then give them a good rub that's all I needed and I'll do this one to two times most five days Okay, here's another live demonstration. Uh, I've already uh, brought the horse down to his knees a couple times. Done it more than five days. We're on our second week doing it. And you'll see a big difference on this horse. He's moving out nice and relaxed. Even with dogs barking. We're just taking it nice and easy. And he's just trotting out. Still keeping my left hand higher than right. And generally when I'm doing this, I don't switch sides with equipment. I've always just kept on left hand side. 
on your side. And I've had great success. Now, once again, this may seem cruel to a lot of people, uh, inhumane, but I'm trying to fix a problem, horse. I've used all low key, low stress, low impact techniques. Uh, fence work sitting on the fence, being above the horse, packing the horse, being above him. A lot of groundwork, a lot of time, and the horse still liked the buck. So exhausting all those measures, we reverted to the running W. And this isn't for anybody or everybody. It takes a special person to do this because you do care that you want to correct the horse and the problem. And you'll see in this video that the horse doesn't hold anything against me. He doesn't fear me. He's not scared of me. And we actually have a pretty good relationship. We're not having any issues here. Like I said, this is the second week. Beautiful relaxation. Now what I'm going to do is take off the run W and then just launch him around. And you can see he's nice and relaxed. And he's not going to buck. In the past he would buck like crazy. When you put a rider on him, he'd buck like crazy. Just like in the, the passages I read, Breaking and Training the Stock Horse by Charles O. Williams, he would do the exact same thing out of that book to the T. I'm just giving him some love. And if this is boring to you, uh, I'm glad. That means this horse is doing what he's supposed to be. Not putting on a bronc show. Okay, I got all equipment off. We'll send the horse out and do some lunging. Okay, point in the direction, falling through with Mariah. In. There he goes. Nice slack in the lunge line. And he's totally relaxed. And so this horse breed is Akatia, and if I'm saying that correctly, 
but it's one of the oldest breeds in the world. Supposedly Alexander the Great uh, rode this breed of horse in the battle. And it is also the precursor of the Arabian horse. So it's very, very high spirited. But you can see it is pretty relaxed. This is Travis. This is a client horse that's here to be trained. There we go. Easier to make flapjacks. All right, folks, so what I wanted to talk about is the risks of doing the running W. That's why it's not recommended unless you have a professional doing uh, that type of leg restraints, because basically that's what they are, is number one, you can scrape up their legs uh, pretty bad. And so try not to do it on hard surface. Once again, try to use sand like I got in this arena, uh, this round pin actually. Uh, number two, you got possibility of breaking limbs if a leg's flailing getting caught inside of the uh, fencing uh, so mitigation on that is try and control the rope of where you're steering the best you can all right number three don't forget to use the leg wraps and the hind legs to mitigate the rope burns right back here underneath the small pasture bone okay let's talk about a, a few additional things number one is uh you pretty much got to use this for seven days, at the most 14 days for the horses that are really, really bad. I'm talking there are troubled horses. So you got to build that repetition to be able to undo all that stuff that's happened to them mentally and inside here to cause them to buck. And basically being pretty darn close to being an outlaw horse. You don't want that, okay? Uh, next thing, once you do get the buck out of the horse by using this method i've never seen residual effects from it i've never seen a horse for example lock his jaw and just take off running because they know they can can't buck so they channel it in a different area i personally haven't seen it some other cowboys possibly have i just haven't seen it and i've been doing this for a while uh, so i just want to lay that out now for those of you who think this is very gross aggressive not needed you know you don't have to use it you know i'm just telling you a way and once again showing you historically what a running w is and you're right vast majority of horses don't need it but i could tell you this people i'd rather go to the last option after all the one other ones are exhausted take a time trying to get the buck out doing my fence work getting on top of the fence moving them back and forth and every other technique that's low impact and if you still can't do it, I'm going to have to do the running W to help change the mindset up here on the horse in the heart of the horse. Not break them, just get understanding a different change of heart in that animal. Because what I don't want to see is a horse going to Mexico if we're down here in the south, or go up in Montana, Wyoming, Idaho area, the horse is going to Canada and being put down. I care that much about the horse that I am going to do a running W at times. Absolutely not all the time, but very few occasions I will with these bad horses, okay? So you have techniques down here. You ratchet up next technique, offering the best uh, offer, best deal. They don't take it. You got to ramp up the right lays W. And then, of course, there's some other techniques I won't get into right now. But this one's very extreme. Okay, we have Kristen on the running W. She's going to help me out on this. And she's already worked uh, the horse a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and get it mounted. Now this is a demonstration of a rider riding the horse with a helper on the running W. I'm just checking my equipment right now. And I'm fixing to get mounted.
And this is extremely dangerous. That's why a lot of people do it all the time. And why I don't do it all the time. Only on the bad ones. Double check in the run W. Make sure it's good to go. And here we go. Getting mounted. Ray in the main. Hand on the swell. And we're on. Okay, so my right hand's on night latch. And pretty soon my left hand will be on the can the canto of the the saddle. I'm rubbing the horse. Christian's pointing, telling the horse to go. And other than that, I'm not hanging on to anything. I'm trying to be as loose as I can. Okay, the horse is getting a little bothered. It's bucking. Kristen slowly grabbed and took the horse to its knees. And she still got the leg. And she's trying to get the horse to go down on its knee. There it goes. And we're whistling. Letting the horse relax. And she's still got one leg put it down on its knee and she's doing a fantastic job on this notice the horse's nose doesn't hit the ground okay and the horse really struggled there and I'm just rubbing the horse let him know it's no biggie and then we're going to have Kristen send us off again. And I'm just reassuring this horse the whole time. That he has nothing to worry about. Remember, we're just trying to change his mind. The bucking is way more work than what it's worth. Okay, so here we go. You can see the horse is not in a hurry. He's relaxed. I'm rubbing him. And you can see this is a habit of him just bucking right away not even thinking and you can see he's thinking now Kristen pulled a little bit on it to remind him that it was there just slow him down and once again this is just showing you historically how the running W was done with the rider and the ground personnel uh, helping out running the running W. Yeah, he's doing great. He's actually blinking his eyes there. He's not hurting. He's not limping. And I just encourage him with positive reinforcement of the right actions which is no bucking just move forward and just be relaxed positive reinforcement send them off again and I'm just a passenger he can see me out his right eye. He can see me out his left eye. He can feel me touching her everywhere. He's got to get used to me being up there without reverting back to his bad habit of just bucking and bucking the rider off and getting away with it.
he's bucked a lot of people off in the past and I don't want the owner to have a broken shoulder broken leg or a broken neck we don't want that nor do we want this horse to go to be turned into glue too young of a horse for something like that okay so Chris is just winding him down and we're building confidence to becoming a good citizen He's doing great. And just a quick reminder, this isn't for everybody. This technique isn't for every horse. Okay, we're going to take this off the next video and show him lunging in hand by Kristen here. And no limping, no injuries. Okay, Chris is going to turn me into her. Draw the horse in. There we go. And she's going to pet the horse. And I'm just going to dismount. Easy pleasy. Easier than making flapjacks, I tell you. Yeah, buddy. He's getting a lot of love. We're not trying to scare this guy. It's just tough love. Twenty bucks. Shaking the saddle. And just stepping down. There we go. All right, folks, I just want to talk about the running W and a trainer, a horseman being on top of the horse's uh, back. Uh, there's three rules uh, working with the horse for training. Number one is the rider's got to be safe. Number two, the horse has got to be safe. And number three, leave the horse better than the way you find it. And those are the general accepted rules when uh, people are training horses. And... Uh, you know, the running W is nothing to joke around with. You have to be very, very careful. You have to be very, very safe about it. But remember who's number one. It's the rider. So when I talk about uh, using running W, which I don't recommend whatsoever, even though you see me in this video do it, I don't do it that often at all, okay? Because it is very dangerous. You have to have uh, somebody, a partner with you that knows what they're doing and you got to put trust that they are going to look out for your best benefit and they're going to pull the knees out on the horse. Because remember, these are prom horses. These are tough, dangerous horses uh, that like to buck and they buck because they like to or they feel like that's the way they've gone at, uh, through a situation in the past by bucking other riders off. And they learned that's a technique that they've developed and it's been successful the whole time. We're trying to say, no, that's not successful. What's going to happen is you're going to go to your knees each time you do it. So I remember we're trying to get up to the mind and we're trying to get to the heart of the animal without breaking their spirit, okay? And you'll see uh, 
you know, you'll see Kristen, you know, help me there. And I definitely appreciated it. Uh, and I think that that horse really needed it. And you'll see on the video that the horse did fine right after it. Okay. Uh, and we'll do it a few more times. And it, it takes a while. They say it takes a thousand repetitions. I do one bad mistake that somebody's taught you know a critter okay and that's a lot of re repetitions on do stuff and that's what we're doing and, and we got a 1200 pound animal we're trying to fix here it is dangerous extremely dangerous i would recommend doing this uh but i did want to show you the historical aspect of riding with uh, the running w i didn't do no close-up shots because i don't want you using it all right uh as a rider but you can see it does work and it's uh, a pretty good deal and uh yeah that's the last uh, i want to talk about it and uh we're going to show you the video uh coming up now okay so i'm going to get mounted up kristen's going to uh, freehand lunge me around and you'll see that this horse has calmed down he's understanding i'll be using my legs on him introducing him And we're just building upon what we've done in the past. So we just removed the running W. But Kristen's still in the center, directing, guiding, and we're building upon that, what he's already comfortable with. And we'll do this uh, for the next few days. And then finally, we'll take Kristen out of the center and just ride the horse. Change in direction here. Trying to, it looks like. Okay, I'm just relaxing with the horse. Staying loose in the saddle. And here we go. Christian's doing a good job of guiding me. I'm just passenger. Yeah, the horse is going again. It's good to take small little breaks. Kristen's got me going. See, this horse's got nice, beautiful head position. Did a lunch, lot of lunging with this horse. Okay, we're practicing the one range stop. Kristen's letting that horse know that she can still on track the hindquarters of this horse if he does something pretty fishy. And because all the groundwork, he knows to follow his noise. And what I'm gonna do is transition when Kristen untracks the hind cores, I'm going to get my timing right and use the bit at the same time. Just building upon what the person on the ground is doing. Building confidence in this horse. A lot of rubbing. A lot of carrying. So if you don't use a running W... To abuse the animal, it could be a wonderful tool. Looking good, looking good. Nice and relaxed. Okay, so I'm just going to fast forward this video. Uh, 
uh, just me riding and how relaxed I am was okay so I'm just speeding up the video nothing's going on with the horse just walking head is down one track and nine quarters changing directions he's doing wonderful he's really relaxed And if it's boring, that's okay. Because that means the horse ain't bucking. We're not interested in competing in rodeo. Not interested in selling this horse as a bucking horse to the rodeo. Yeah, he's doing awesome. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe to this channel. Check out other great videos that are on this channel. And subscribe. Okay, so we're done. No issues. Okay, so just going to practice going up, get down, get up, get it down. Since now he's not bucking. Because normally you get on, he likes to buck. And he's not now. So Rung W could be a great tool. getting the saddle off there we go folks okay once again this is not uh, an exercise for punishment of a horse or only get even with the horse horses don't think that way you have to be safe about conducting the action uh, to occur and I just wanted to point that out uh, so yeah uh, basically that's the running W there and that was part of my ending my commentary Sorry if I'm boring you, but uh, try to use other steps first before you go to the running W. It's uh, not a last option, but it's definitely ranked up there quite a bit, okay? So now you have the knowledge to become the solution, and we'll catch you next time on this channel. Take care now. Adios. Mm -hmm.